Hello, it's Jimmy here at O'Reilly's. Got here Land Rover Discovery 4. Uh, it's got restricted performance issue. Okay, inside the vehicle you can see there it's got a restricted performance. And again, it's got another, another little bit of a story to it. It's uh, had several different trips to Land Rover dealership. And he said they've changed the... It doesn't make sense to me, but they've changed the, the manifold pressure sensor, the the mass airflow sensor and various other bits and pieces and he said uh, it spent on one of the occasions it spent over eight weeks at the Land Rover dealership now and obviously I don't want to mention what Land Rover dealership it was but uh, anyway it was nice of them to say you know the guy from the Land Rover dealership gave him my number and said look go and see this guy and see what he can do for you um, because the next time they're going to be able to see it again would be probably another eight weeks it's going to need to spend in the garage so the guys drove it down to me from North London I think and we'll uh, go through and see what's wrong with it ok I've got the diagnostic machine here set up this is the launch Eurotab 3 get that zoomed out a little bit so we can see what's going on we'll do smart detection see what faults we have here so it's probably just going to be the ones in the ECM that we're uh, going to be concentrating on let's just have a quick look at these lost communication with the body control module Lost communication with the headlamp control. Manifold absolute pressure mass or volume airflow correlation. Manifold pressure barometric circuit. So we've got a P105 and a P. Now this is the one, the only code that the customer told me about was this one. I wasn't expecting to even see the correlation. But from that code straight away, it can only mean one of a very couple of couple of um, easy items to diagnose so I really don't know how this has been going on for three months or more uh, to a Land Rover dealership I'd, I'd imagine I just yeah it don't I don't understand how that code could not be diagnosed at a Land Rover garage now obviously I have to be difficult with my well what's the word easy with my wording because I'm not saying that this customer you know or, or any customers do bend the story a little bit but sometimes you think this can't be right you know this spent three months at a Land Rover garage and replaced various parts for a fault code that is self-explanatory basically it's got an airflow correlation which means the airflow that's coming up here is lower than it is at the intake so the air that's coming in is high and then once it gets down to the manifold of the engine it's then all of a sudden not the same that it's a lower air pressure so that can only mean between those two areas there's the leak so we'll go in and have a look maybe with a smoke test probably know what it's going to be it's either going to be a cracked manifold or a split boost hose somewhere and if it's not that then maybe I might have to start scratching my head okay now so what the customer's saying on this car which probably makes sense for it being a boost leak if you switch the engine off so it's just it's literally just arrived he said if you switch it off switch it back on the problem has gone and the fault will only return under certain conditions so let's try that out so if you put your foot down I'd imagine then the fault would come back pretty quick okay so we're just cruising at around about 30 miles an hour everything seems okay now what would confirm that it's not a sensor issue and that it is a, an air leak would be if you put your foot down let's do that put our foot down once you get good acceleration we should get the restricted performance come back up there we go and we've also got the engine management light on there 
Okay, so I'm gonna go back, re-scan it for codes again. Okay, so we've still got the same two codes. Okay, so Land Rover have changed this, this, and we need to get off the uh, engine cover. Get that off. So they've also changed this, and it hasn't worked. Now, common issue with these is for the intake manifold to crack. Can crack in around here between the between the injectors. So just having a look with a torch, it looks pretty dry, but you never know. There could be a small leak there. It's usually that side if they do fail. We'll check to check both sides here as well. It looks pretty dry on both sides. Well, there's oil here. This isn't fitted properly. This is not fitted properly, it's not sitting level. It's definitely not attached properly, I don't think. Uh, what's going on here? Cable tie? Right, we're going to open this and put a smoke test on, but it looks like we're going to be having a leak from this area here. So I'm going to open the inlet. Pull that off. Now I've got a smoke machine here from Launch UK. We're going to get this connected into the inlet. Like this. And then we can pump up the bag so it seals. Get this switched on. Now we've got smoke coming from here, so we'll get it attached into the bag that goes to the air inlet there. But like I said, don't really need a smoke test. If you've got your eyes, you can see that it's leaking from around here. But we'll just confirm it anyway. Maybe that could have been leaking at a, another time, but to me, that doesn't look like it's been seated properly. Okay, because these have got um, twin intakes, obviously when you put it through here it's just coming back out for the air filter. So we're going to go directly straight in, in through the intake here. This, these are usually the main areas, but of course you could, it could have a leak from the, from the intercooler. It does happen. I'll give that a couple of minutes now to work the smoke through. Okay, we've got smoke coming from the EGR valve there. Just coming from where the actuator rod sits in. So I've disconnected it from here now. We're going to run it back into the intercooler. See if we if we have any more leaks anywhere else. If you look on the uh, radiator fan here, you can see where it where it was catching here. Obviously, at some point it wasn't fitted correctly, and it's been catching. It's not, it's not leaking now, this. I was hoping it was going to be this, but it's not leaking at the minute. Um, so, the only thing that's leaking is the EGR valve. Um, this one looks okay, but it's just the one on this side. Okay, so we've checked this direction, that direction. We've checked all of the pipes. The only leak that we can find is coming from down there. Uh, I was expecting to see an in inlet manifold leak, of course, but maybe that's why they had a bit of confusion. But that leak is probably enough to set off the code that's happening, so we'll call it a, a day on the diagnostic. It was just for diagnostic on this, he just wants to know what's wrong with it. Okay, all finished, and see you on our next video.